In the dim light of the early morning, the forest seemed still, almost peaceful. I had always been fascinated by Aokigahara, known globally as the Suicide Forest. The stories, myths, and eerie silence that cloaked its dense thicket drew me like a moth to a flame. Today, armed with a backpack, my camera, and an insatiable curiosity, I ventured into its depths. The air was cool, carrying a mist that clung to my clothes as I walked. My guide, an elderly man named Hiroshi, led the way, his steps deliberate and respectful. He had warned me about the dangers, not just the physical ones but those that tampered with the mind. The forest is alive, listen, he whispered suddenly, stopping in his tracks. I paused, strained my ears, and heard nothing but the faint rustle of leaves. Yet, the silence seemed loaded, heavy with unspoken words. What are we listening for? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. For the whispers, Hiroshi replied, his eyes scanning the shadowy undergrowth. They say the forest speaks to those who dare to listen. We moved deeper into Aokigahara, the canopy above us blotting out the weak sunlight. The ground was uneven, littered with roots and volcanic rocks. Every so often, Hiroshi would point out a faded ribbon or a small pile of stones, markers left by those who had come before us, some not to return. Why do people choose this place? I asked, my camera hanging heavily around my neck. It's said to be a gateway, a place between worlds, he explained, his voice low. Many believe it eases their passage, calms their spirits. As we ventured further, the forest seemed to close in around us. I could almost feel the weight of countless sorrows, soaked into the very soil we tread upon. The light dimmed further, and the mist thickened, swirling around us like wraiths dancing in the gloom. Suddenly, a chill ran down my spine. I spun around, certain I had heard something, a whisper, a faint voice calling out. Did you hear that? I asked Hiroshi, my heart pounding in my chest. He did not answer immediately, his gaze fixed on a spot behind me. Slowly, he nodded. It begins, he murmured, do not answer back. Panic gripped me, but my curiosity was stronger. I raised my camera, peering through the lens, hoping to catch a glimpse of whatever might be lurking. But there was nothing, only the dense, twisted vegetation and the endless gray mist. We should not stay in one place for too long, Hiroshi advised, starting to walk again. Keep moving, and whatever you do, do not stray from the path. We continued in silence the atmosphere thickening with every step. The forest seemed to whisper with the voices of those long gone, each step echoing their silent screams. I felt eyes on me, watching from the darkness, but every time I turned, there was nothing there. As we reached a particularly dense part of the forest, Hiroshi halted abruptly. His hand shot out, grabbing my arm. Look, he said, pointing at a small, clear area ahead. There, amidst the sea of green and gray, stood a figure. It was a woman, dressed in white, her back to us, her hair long and unkempt. She stood perfectly still, and for a moment, I thought she might be a statue, an odd installation left by some artist. But then, she moved, her head tilting slightly to one side as if listening. The air around us grew cold, and I could see my breath forming clouds in the air. Hiroshi's grip tightened on my arm, pulling me closer. Do not approach her, he cautioned, his voice barely audible. She is not of this world. My heart raced as I watched her, the mysterious woman in white. She seemed ethereal, almost translucent against the dense backdrop of the forest. Curiosity overwhelmed me, and I raised my camera slowly, focusing the lens on her. As I clicked the shutter, the sound impossibly loud in the quiet of the forest, she turned. Her face was pale, her eyes hollow. They seemed to bore into my soul, filled with an indescribable sadness. I gasped, the camera falling slightly as the image blurred. What is she? I whispered, unable to tear my gaze away. A Yuri, 
Hiroshi replied, a spirit bound to the earth by sorrow, by pain. We stood there, frozen, watching as she drifted slowly toward us, her movements fluid, almost floating. The air grew colder, the mist swirling more intensely around her. I could feel the temperature drop, my fingers numbing as I clutched my camera. Keep walking, Hiroshi urged, pulling me back gently. We must not let her come too close. Reluctantly, I followed him, my eyes still on the spirit. She stopped moving as we did, her sad gaze following us. It felt as though she was reaching out, not with hands, but with her despair. Why is she here? I managed to ask, as we resumed our careful trek through the forest. Many spirits linger here, Hiroshi explained. They are trapped, unable to move on. This place, it attracts them, binds them. The path became rougher, the roots thicker and more treacherous underfoot. Every crack of a twig, every whisper of the wind made me jump. The forest seemed to press in on us the trees like silent sentinels watching our every move. As we moved, the forest began to change. The trees grew closer together, their branches intertwining, creating a canopy so dense that very little light penetrated. The air was thick, heavy with the scent of decay and moisture. We are entering the heart of Aokigahara, Hiroshi said, his voice serious. It is here that the veil is thinnest, where the spirits are strongest. I could feel it, an almost electric charge in the air, a palpable sense of otherness. Shadows seemed to move independently of their sources, flickering at the edges of my vision. I turned quickly, catching glimpses of figures that vanished when looked at directly. Did you see that? I asked, pointing to where a shadow had darted behind a tree. Hiroshi nodded, his face grave. They are aware of us he said. We must be careful. The spirits are restless today. The path curved, and suddenly we came upon a small clearing. In the center stood an old, twisted tree, its branches bare, the bark blackened as if burned by fire. From its limbs hung numerous strings and ropes, some old and frayed, others disturbingly new. This is the tree, Hiroshi murmured, his tone somber. Many souls have ended their journeys here. The atmosphere was oppressive, the weight of despair palpable. I could almost hear the echoes of those who had come here in their final moments, their whispers carried on the wind. It was a place of sorrow, a place of endings. I feel them, I confessed, a shiver running down my spine. It's like they're all around us. They are, Hiroshi agreed. Their pain lingers. It feeds the forest. We did not stay long in the clearing. The feeling of being watched, of being surrounded by unseen eyes, was too intense. We continued on, the path winding deeper into the forest. As we walked, the sightings became more frequent. Figures appeared and disappeared, a child crouched behind a rock, an old man leaning against a tree, a young woman wandering aimlessly among the trees. Each apparition seemed lost, caught in their own silent torment. The forest began to close in, the path narrowing, the trees pressing close on either side. The light dimmed further, the canopy thickening above us. I could no longer see the sky, only the twisted branches that seemed to writhe against a backdrop of perpetual dusk. We should not be here when it gets dark, Hiroshi warned. The spirits grow stronger with the night. I nodded, my mouth dry, my body tense with every step. The forest seemed to be closing in on us, the air growing colder, the mist thicker. Every shadow seemed to hide a watching eye, every whisper of the wind a voice calling out from the beyond. As we rounded a bend in the path, Hiroshi suddenly stopped, his hand raised for silence. Ahead, the path was shrouded in a thick, almost unnatural mist. Shapes moved within it shadows darker than the surrounding gloom. Wait, Hiroshi whispered, his voice tense as he stared into the thickening mist. His hand gripped my arm, a silent command to stay still. I peered forward, my breath held tight in my chest. 
The shapes within the mist shifted, merging and parting like specters in a ghostly dance. I could see them more clearly now. Figures, human in form but lacking substance, moved languidly. Their motions were slow, deliberate, as if the air around them was denser, heavier. My heart hammered against my ribs, a staccato rhythm that seemed loud in the enveloping silence of the forest. Who are they? I asked, my voice barely a whisper, fearing any louder sound might draw their attention. The lost, Hiroshi answered, his eyes never leaving the mist. Those who cannot find peace, trapped here by their own despair. As we watched, one of the figures turned towards us, its face obscured by the swirling fog. It paused, as if sensing our gaze and then began moving slowly in our direction. Hiroshi tensed, and I could feel his readiness to turn and flee. We should not be here, he said, urgency creeping into his voice. This part of the forest, it's too strong, too active. But before we could move, another figure emerged from the mist, this one clearer, more defined. A woman, her face pale and sorrowful, her eyes hollow with grief. She stopped a few yards away, her gaze piercing as she looked directly at me. Help us, she whispered, her voice carrying across the distance, unnaturally clear. Please, help us leave. I felt a chill run down my spine. The air around us grew colder, and I could see Hiroshi's breath forming clouds in the frigid air. He remained silent, his expression unreadable. Why are they trapped here? I asked, unable to tear my eyes away from the woman. Their ties to the living world were not severed properly, Hiroshi explained, his voice low. Unresolved issues, unexpressed emotions, they bind them to this place. What can we do? My question was a plea driven by a sudden, overwhelming desire to help these lost souls. Hiroshi was silent for a moment, contemplating. There is a way, but it is dangerous. The forest does not release its hold easily. I want to try, I said, my decision firm. The sight of these tormented spirits, their despair so palpable, moved something within me. Hiroshi nodded slowly, then began instructing me. We need to perform a ritual, an offering of peace. But we must be quick. Night is falling, and the forest grows more powerful in the dark. We gathered materials from around us, twigs, stones, and leaves. Hiroshi arranged them in a circle, chanting softly in Japanese. I didn't understand the words, but their rhythmic cadence seemed to soothe the air around us, the mist lightly swirling within our makeshift circle. Repeat after me, Hiroshi instructed, and I echoed his words, the foreign sounds awkward on my tongue. As we chanted, the atmosphere shifted. The air grew heavier, the mist thickening, pressing in around us. The figures in the mist drew closer their forms becoming more distinct, more desperate. The woman who had spoken stepped into the circle, her gaze locked on mine. Thank you, she murmured, her voice filled with a heartbreaking gratitude. One by one, the spirits approached, stepping into the circle, and one by one, they vanished, their forms dissolving into the air, their whispers of thanks a soft chorus that faded with them. When the last spirit had disappeared, the forest felt lighter, as if a great weight had been lifted. The oppressive atmosphere had eased, the air fresher, cleaner. Hiroshi let out a long breath, his relief palpable. We did it, I said, a sense of awe in my voice. We actually helped them. Yes, Hiroshi agreed, a small smile touching his lips but we must leave now. The forest will not be pleased with our interference. 
We hurried back along the path, the forest around us quieter, less menacing. As we emerged from its depths, the last light of day fading from the sky, I felt a profound sense of peace. The journey back was uneventful, the night sounds of the forest less ominous, more natural. When we finally reached the edge of Aikigahara, I looked back, half expecting to see something, someone watching us. But there was only the forest, silent and still. As we walked away, I knew I would never forget this place, the spirits I had seen, and the peace we had brought. Aikigahara had changed me, its mysteries and sorrows leaving an indelible mark on my soul.